I've always said the ultimate test of an airline and how good they are is not how blingy they are at the front of the aircraft, but how they treat their economy class passengers and just how good their economy class is. Well, tonight I'm giving Qatar the ultimate test. I'm flying from here, Adelaide, through to Doha. It's about 12, 13 hours a long haul flight overnight. Um, in economy class, I'm traveling with my wife, so we'll see what, uh, we'll see what that's like. And we're off to Azerbaijan, so it's, uh, we are excited to be traveling again. Uh, this particular aircraft, it's a, one of the workhorses of the Qatar fleet. It's a, a 777. In the past six weeks, it's been to uh, Seattle, to Washington, to Sao Paulo, to London, to Paris, here to Adelaide a couple of times, to Melbourne and to Auckland. So uh, this is the, I suppose, bog standard uh, Qatar economy class long haul service. What's it going to be like? Is it as good as it's hyped up to be? Join me and we'll find out. Qatar is part of One World, and uh, because I'm a Qantas Platinum frequent flyer, uh, One World Emerald, I have lounge access. But the Qantas lounge has still got restricted airports here at Adelaide Airport in the evenings, so Qatar have uh, provided us with some vouchers for the Penfolds Wine Bar. It's a really nice place, and uh, all being well, there should be a gin and tonic uh, waiting here for me. Let's go and do that. How is it? Cheers, here's to a great flight. We're gonna do it. Are you looking forward to it? I am. Azerbaijan, here we come. Boarding. Julia's got a uh, secondary security check. Uh, she always looked a bit dodgy, so uh, I'm not surprised this is happening to her. Oh, she's uh, she's coming. which uh, obviously I've reviewed many times before. Um, it is a very nice way to fly if you ever get a chance. Whilst the lights are on and before the flight fills up, let's quickly check out the seats that will be our home for the next 13 hours. The seats themselves are quite firm and offer good support. I prefer this because it's better for my dodgy back than soft seats or those ergonomically designed for short people. The headrests are great, fully adjustable with the ability to wrap the sides around your head so that you can avoid the dreaded sleepy head drop while sleeping. In front of you is the entertainment screen. Below this is a remote for the gamers and the USB and headphone ports. There is also a universal power point between each seat. Storage wise, Kata does well with a good sized main pocket and two smaller ones for keeping your phone and other devices in. The tray table is pretty good too with a solid latch and the ability to use only half the tray for drinks. Unfortunately though, there isn't the handy separate drink holder that Singapore Airlines features on their economy class seats. with the seat in front reclined. Um, good thing the TV screen comes out, but it is very close to you. And this is without the seat in front if you recline. So you can see you're, you know, it's a lot further away. It's good viewing. 
Ik moet mijn stomach in. And finally, here's Allegra. Not bad for a long haul economy class flight. In terms of cabin layout, the Qatar 777 features 312 economy class seats laid out in a 343 configuration across three separate economy class cabins. Except for our row, as we were in the very last row of the forward economy class cabin, which only has two seats on the side. These seats have the obvious advantage for couples in that there is nobody sitting next to you. Also, you have nobody behind you kicking your seat or using it as a lever to stand up whilst you're trying to sleep. The price you pay though is that you're right next to the bathrooms and at times during the flight the bathroom queue is right next to your seat. Once everybody was seated and the bags loaded, it was time for us to push back, watch the safety video and take to the skies. Now that we're in the sky, let's have a closer look at the goodies that were waiting on our seats when we boarded. The economy class amenities kit is a good one, with everything you'd need for a comfortable and sleep-filled flight. The COVID-induced hygiene kit features a very handy tube of sanitizer, which I used on my travels. I never did find a use for the rubber gloves though. There was no separate drink or bar service after takeoff. I was getting pretty thirsty and would have appreciated some water, but because this was an evening departure for a long overnight flight, the emphasis was on getting the dinner service out as quickly as possible to maximise sleep time. The dinner service, which incorporated the bar service, started about 45 minutes after departure. For those of you wondering, it takes just over 30 minutes for a single crew member to serve one side of the front economy cabin. This is very impressive, considering there were 25 people in front of us three choices for main course and a full bar selection. The main course choices were beef, chicken or veggie pasta. Both Julie and I went with the pasta, which was tasty but a bit dry in parts. In a carb overload it also came with a pesto pasta salad, which was delicious, and a custody type dessert which was also pretty tasty. All of this was, of course, accompanied by gin and tonic. The menus are provided on the in-flight Wi-Fi system but I couldn't bring it up on this flight. I did manage to get them up on the return flight to Adelaide though, and here are the screenshots of that menu. The return flight departs Doha at 1.30 a.m. and arrives into Adelaide 12 to 13 hours later at about 9 p.m. Catering wise, this appears to be classified as a daytime flight and features a very comprehensive menu for an economy flight. Here's a shot of my lunch from that return flight, the Kung Pao chicken. As soon as the trays were cleared, I tucked my head into the armrest and closed my eyes. I managed about five hours of pretty reasonable sleep and woke up with just over four hours left to Doha. Now was the perfect time to check out the entertainment system. First up the bad. The route map is terrible. It's not interactive, provides little information, and most frustratingly appears to show adverts promoting Qatar about 50% of the time. In contrast, the rest of the entertainment system is excellent with lots of viewing and listening choices. On my return flight, I managed four movies. On this flight, only one, The King's Speech. It's a few years old now, but I'd never seen it. I thought it was excellent and it covered the time to our next meal nicely. About two hours before our arrival into Doha, breakfast was served. Again, this was a full meal service with three choices of main course. I went with scrambled eggs, chicken sausage, beans and potatoes, which was very good. Julie had the fried egg noodles, which she enjoyed. The third choice was banana bread. Each main course was accompanied by fruit, yogurt and a croissant. In-flight Wi-Fi was available for just $10 US for the entire flight, 
which I thought was very reasonable. It worked well enough to enable me to track our flight on Flight Radar 24 and post some photos on Instagram. Now's probably a good time to remind you to follow me on Instagram too. We landed in Doha at 2.40 a.m., which meant the entire flight was in the dark. Plus, I was sitting on the dark side of the aircraft on our approach, so I couldn't even film the city lights. So alas, the only window views I can offer is this shot of the engine. Considering I normally sit in these seats, or I have the last few times, uh, this has been a really good flight. The first time in economy on a long haul for uh, a long time. How are you there? And we've done it. We've reached Doha. Reach, reach thank, thank, thank you very much. That was really nice. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Bye bye. We've made it all the way to Doha. What did you think? Uh, yeah, I thought it was great. Um, very comfortable, great in-flight entertainment, current movies. Um, unfortunately, I had a headache the whole way, so I didn't sleep very well, but um, it, that's nothing to do with the, the aircraft or the comfort level. So yeah, very good. And uh, yeah, I really liked it. I ended up with about uh, five hours, four and a half, five hours sleep, so uh, quite a decent effort, obviously, sleeping sitting up is different to sleeping lying down but uh, all in all a very comfortable good, flight yeah. and uh, we enjoyed it hmm. we're good now here now. in uh, Doha for uh, about 19 hours before our connecting flight so we're going to uh, find the hotel and uh, then enjoy the delights of this airport but that'll be for another video so keep an eye out for that hey thanks for watching if you enjoyed this one give it a comment uh, thumbs up, like, all that sort of stuff. Subscribe if you haven't done so and that's your sort of thing. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for a whole lot more videos. In the meantime, as always, happy travels. This is, this is your cue to say bye. Oh, happy travels <laughs> and thanks for watching. <laughs>